class. So Maharaj is so merciful uh, to come in today because uh, there was a vacant post for the classes and suddenly Krishna arranged Maharaj. So we'd like to thank Maharaj. Please enter the class. Uh, thank you very much for coming in to the Zoom. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Welcome Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We are so blessed to have you Maharaj. Thank you Prabhu. Very happy to be there. You, I, you know I haven't opened my camera because we just had a very big thunderstorm here. Okay. With, and uh, okay. and the, the power is on and off. So it's, uh, it's usually easier if I don't open the camera. If I open the camera, it's likely to go down. The whole thing would go off. So forgive me. Uh, oh. So uh, Maharaj, you would like to continue with the class? Yes, Prabhu, please. Thank you. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, so I, I, I'm very happy to be with all the devotees from ISKCON clan, as well as some other people who have joined. Uh, I wanted to speak briefly about you, about the important period which is coming up, as you know, in a few days. On the 21st, actually, we will have the first day of the month of Damodar, or what we officially call it, the month of Kartik. Kartik is actually one of the names of Srimati Radharani. So the month of Kartik is very auspicious, and traditionally, devotees like to observe the month of Kartik by worshipping the Lord in the form of Damodar. And at that time we will also offer a lamp to Lord Damodar. It's very powerful for us. It said every lamp you offer, every light you offer, you make a lot of spiritual advancement. Because the light destroys ignorance. There's a verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita which says, Krishna Surya Sama Maya Haya Andikar Yahan Krishna Tahannahi Maya Adikar. The meaning is that Krishna is like the sun and Maya is like darkness. Wherever there is Krishna, there can be no Maya. Just as wherever there is the light of the sun, there can be no darkness. So offering lights. It's a common tradition in many different religions. We see in the, in the Catholic Church and in the Buddhism, and like as well as sometimes in different Hindu festivals, we will offer lights to the Lord, light. Because light is displaying, it, it's meaning uh, knowledge, and destroying ignorance. So this is very good for us. We know we're influenced by ignorance, we're influenced by the lower modes, rajagun, tamagun, they get, they affect us badly and it causes us to fall down into the material existence. So we want to always keep ourselves above the modes of passion and ignorance and the way we can do it, especially in this month of Kartik, is by remembering every day to sing the Damodar Astika song 
we should sing the whole song, all eight verses, and offering a light to the Lord also. It will be very good for us. And of course, Malaysia devotees, they've been very successful in, uh, pop in uh, doing propaganda work during the month of Kartik, going to people's homes and getting people to offer a lamp and telling them about the Leela of Lord Damodar. And sometimes we give them also a picture of Lord Damodar and we explain to them how they can worship and how they can also offer a lamp. So this is very nice. His Holiness Jai Pitaka Swami recently wrote to us about how he had asked Srila Prabhupada what extra they needed to do during the month of Kartik. And Srila Prabhupada said, he, he wrote back, or he told Jai Pitaka Maharaj that Kartik is, he said, for, for regular devotees, you just go on and do your regular duties. Every day you have to chant 16 rounds and you have to hear the Shastra and follow strictly the four principles. He said, so for, for the devotees it's not so special, but the month of Kartik, it, it's, it, and Prabhupada gave an example, he compared it to just like sometimes the big store will have a sale and they want to attract new customers to come to their store. And so they'll have a sale and they'll offer goods at special prices and so on. And so for the regular customers it's not such a big thing. But the, the store is hoping, to, is, their, their aspiration is to attract new people to come to their store. So Srila Prabhupada said the month of Kartik is like that. It's a time when we should try to introduce Krishna consciousness to new people or at least give them a chance to do a little devotional service. Even they may not take up Krishna consciousness, but we at least give them a chance to do a little devotional service that they can offer a lamp and they can hear about the glories of Lord Damodar and they can see the form of Lord Damodar, like that. And so. We hope that uh, the devotees in Iskon Klang will also be thinking like this about how they can also do a little propaganda and try to distribute Krishna consciousness to people. I remember last, last year also, despite the pandemic, the devotees did very well and they did manage to get a lot of people to offer lamps. So although we're, the whole planet is affected by the pandemic situation, you, we have to be careful, but at the same time try to do a little bit propaganda work, give people a chance to hear about Lord Damodar. Especially if you know some people, you have some friends and so on, you give them a chance they can offer a lamp to Lord Damodar and get some blessings from the Lord. Even they, if they can't offer, if, you, if, you, if it's not so easy for you to get them to offer a lamp, at least get them to chant the holy name. Get them to say Hare Krishna, right? This is also very important for everyone. You may not be able to meet people or get them to offer the lamp, but at least get them to say Hare Krishna. That's very good. We try to do like that when we go on the Parikrama here in Mayapur, when we go around the nine islands, you know, as we go through the different villages in the nine islands, the people from the villages will come out to look at all of us. Because we're an international party and they're very curious to see all the different people, the different, you know, how we're so different, many different shapes and colors and eyes, different eyes. And, and they come and look at us and they laugh at us as well. And then they see us, some, some, they see the children and they see the old people and they see everyone taking part in the Parikrama and it's, it's very amusing to them. 
So when we go through the village, we usually we call out to them, Hare Krishna. We say, Sabbolie, Hare Krishna, Sabbolie, Hare Krishna. And they will all respond, you know, if the people are really pious, if the people in the villages are Hindu, of course the Muslim people, they won't say anything, but the, the Hindu people, they will raise their hands in the air and they will say, Hare Krishna. And sometimes we're fortunate, we go past the school and all the children will come out to see us. And then if we say to all the children, Sabbolie, Hare Krishna, every one of the school children will raise their hands in the air and they'll call out, Hare Krishna. And so it's very nice to get people to chant the holy name. And it's even nicer if you can get them to offer a lamp to Lord Damodar. So this is something which we ask all of you to meditate on for this coming month of Damodar. At least you yourself must make a vow that every day you're going to sing the Damodar song. And we, after singing it, we will also recite the song so that we should know what the meaning of the song is. Srila Prabhupada told us that when we sing these songs, it's very important for us to know the meaning. Of course, some Bengalis, if you're Bengali, then you would know the meaning. You know the, you know the language. Many of the songs are in Bengali. Damodar Astikam song is in Sanskrit, of course. So you have to know Sanskrit to understand properly the meaning. Anyway, we have the song translated. So after we sing the song, then we like to also recite the translation. It's probably also translated into Tamil. I know in, 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 in China we have it all translated to Chinese. So the devotees will say the meaning, they'll read the meaning in Chinese. And many of the devotees, they've all memorized the meaning of the, the song. Verbatim, they can recite without looking at the sheet. So that's very good. We want to encourage that kind of thing. Get everybody to uh, memorize these wonderful songs. They're so special, they're so wonderful. Of course, this Damodar Astikam song is only sung usually at this time in the year, the month of Kartik. The rest of the year we will never hear it. But during the month of Kartik, every day we will hear it. Indeed, in the temples like Vrindavan and Mayapur, we will sing every morning and every evening. We will offer lights morning and evening. The, it's very good. You get a you get a wonderful opportunity. If you're singing it every day like that, then it becomes very easy for us to remember. Just like reading the Bhagavad Gita. Reading the Bhagavad Gita, if we read a chapter a day, then gradually we start to understand and to know the meaning. We've been teaching in Malaysia, they've been teaching the Gita Gyan course, I think they're now on the third level, level one, level two, now they're on level three teaching Gita Gyan course. So it's a, a nice opportunity for the devotees to become more familiar with the Bhagavad Gita. If we read it on our own, we may not take in very much. But when we read it as a group and we hear it, we hear it presented with a PowerPoint presentation, with pictures and so on, illustration, then it's much easier for us to absorb and take in all the nice points of the Bhagavad Gita. This is a, a recent innovation, of course. This Gita Gyan course began only in the last year. But it's very wonderful and I also took the opportunity to introduce it into Thailand and then I passed it on to Taiwan so the devotees in Taiwan also did it. And in Thailand we did two, we did level one and level two. Uh, we have to do level three soon. So, the, and devotees, when I was teaching to the Thailand devotees, many devotees from Burma also came and joined the course. 
because they wanted to hear also. So there's a demand. Even people are in, they're initiated in Krishna consciousness, but they, they're more eager to hear. But there are other people also who are not yet initiated and who are new, not yet devotees, maybe not even chanting. They're also interested. There are many people who read the Bhagavad Gita and want to understand it better and they get a lot of benefit by coming into our course and hearing the presentations. So the month of Kartik has many wonderful festivals, of course. Most auspicious of all the festivals in the month of Kartik, we have the Govardhan Puja. That's very special festival, a very joyous festival, where we prepare a lot of prasada. And of course, we may have to do it, 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 depending on the situation, you may not be able to come together, but maybe the temple can prepare prasadam, and even if you can't come to the temple, maybe you could just come by the temple and pick up a box of prasadam, something like that. They can prepare, you know, if the, if the devotees cannot come and sit at the temple to take prasadam, then at least you can arrange boxes and everyone can come by take a box. And similarly for offering candles, maybe the temple can arrange to be open in the evenings, at least on the, on the weekends it can be open and devotees can come to offer their lights to Lord Damodar. It's certainly very nice to come to the temple on these auspicious days like Govardhan Puja. So Govardhan Puja is a very important festival and it's just at the Diwali time. And then another very auspicious event which takes place during the month of Kartik is the disappearance day of our founder Acharya, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And that, that event comes like, uh, I think, four days after Govardhan Puja. So these are the, probably the two major events which take place during the month of Kartik. But there's many other also auspicious events taking place. For example, one of the events is the appearance of Radha Kund. Radha Kund, the, which is... Uh, very dear to Lord Krishna, the Radha Kund Lake in Vrindavan. There's a, a, during the month of Kartik, there's a special day where in the midnight it said Radha Kund appeared. So many, many, many devotees, they will go to Radha Kund on that night and they'll take bath at midnight in the Radha Kund. And then there's also the disappearance day of uh, great saints like Naratam Das Thakur, who was uh, one of the very great Acharyas after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Naratam Das Thakur wrote many wonderful songs which we benefit by singing, all in simple language about the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. And then there's disappearance days of other Acharyas also who were associated with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So all of these different events take place during the auspicious month of Kartik. So we want everyone to be conscious that Kartik, uh, just like for Chaturmas, you know, this month of Kartik, this is actually the fourth month of Chaturmasya. So, there are rules for each of the months during the four months of austerity. During the first month, we were fasting from sak or spinach. And during the second month, we fasted from yogurt. And during this third month, which is just finishing, we're fasting from milk. And now, for the month of Kartik, there's also fasting. And the fasting is that we should not take urdal. 
Urdal, of course, is used by a lot of Tamil people because when they prepare their dosa in Italy, Urdal is a, an important ingredient there. However, during the month of Kartik, we're, we're not supposed to use Urdal. And it said we should not take meat. Of course, for devotees, we don't take meat anyway. But you may like to encourage other people who don't follow very strictly. You should tell them that, please, for this month of Kartik, do you think for one month you could make a vow to be a vegetarian? And you can assure them that if they can observe the vegetarian diet strictly for one month, it will be a great blessing for them. Particularly because it's the auspicious time of Kartik. So it said, we should not take any high-protein food. So, of course, meat is high-protein. And other high-protein food means things like tur dal or masur dal, ur dal. These things, they're all very high-protein. And we want to reduce the protein content. And that means less passion. When we take a lot of high-protein foodstuffs, we become more rajasic. We become more influenced by the mode of passion. And the mode of passion leads us to the mode of ignorance. So we should be very conscious and careful during the month of Kartik to eat simply. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, yogi does not eat too much or eat too little, right? You eat too much, you get diabetes. Diabetes, they say, is the rich man's disease. And you eat too little, then you will get something like tuberculosis. If you, have, if you don't eat enough food, if you don't get enough nourishment, then you may get tuberculosis. I was giving class one time, I remember, I was in Malaysia somewhere, I can't remember where now, but I was giving class and I brought this point up and it turned out there were three people who were diabetic and there were two people who had had TB. <laughs> it's very interesting. So the point is, we have to be careful. Don't eat too much and don't eat too little. And it's important to, be, to know how to cook. Devotees, actually our tradition, Krishna consciousness, the Gaudiya Math, the Gaudiya Vaishnava line, it's sometimes called the kitchen religion. The kitchen religion, because we spend so much time in the kitchen cooking food for offering to the deities. Can you hear the, in the background, you can hear the jackals? This Mayapur, you know, I'm, I'm staying a little in a, a little bit remote area where we have our Mayapur Institute and there's some forest nearby and there are many jackals. And so in the night, the jackal is the beast of the night. And so they, they howl. Woo, 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 woo. And one starts howling and then they all start and it becomes a big noise and then suddenly it will all just stop. And so don't get too worried if you hear the jackals. Sometimes also I meet them in the night when I'm going to Mongol Arti, pass them on the path. They usually avoid, they'll run away. Jackals look like dogs, They're smaller than dogs. So. Anyway, they make a lot of noise, a lot of trouble. So this month of Kartik, very auspicious, very important for us to take advantage of these holy days. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written in one of his songs, you know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote many songs about devotional service. And one of his one uh, set of songs which he wrote was called Sharanagati. Sharanagati meaning surrender. 
Now, there are six items of surrender, right? Does anybody remember the six items of surrender? Could you give me one? Maybe, Sri Devi Gurangi, can you give me one item of surrender? Surrender of food. No, that there are six items of surrender. One, do you know anyone? It's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in the purport of 1866. You remember 1866? Sarva dharmam parigyajna mamikam sharanam braja. Right? Krishna says, give up all your dharmas and surrender unto me. I will free you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada explains the meaning of surrender. We'll ask Shuddha Sindhu Mataji, can you tell us an item of surrender? Should Shuddha Sindhu, yes. Uh, yes, an item of surrender. How, what is the meaning of surrender? There are six items you should know. You are practicing Krishna consciousness. It's good to know these things. If someone asks you, what does it mean to surrender? There are six items. Who, Surya Nandini, Surya Nandini, do you know? Surya Nandini? No. No, I don't know, Maharaj. You don't know? Nara Narayan, do you know? Um, Maharaj, I'll try um, to, to, to surrender everything uh, to Krishna and uh, have complete faith in Him that He will take care of... Uh, no, 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 no. You don't have it. You don't know. Okay, so I have to tell all of you, please listen carefully. This is mentioned in the purport of the Bhagavad Gita and it's also a verse which is in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The six items of surrender. First of all, one should accept everything favorable for devotional service. Right? One should accept everything which is favorable for devotional service. What is favorable for devotional service? Sri Devi. Krishna Guru Maharaj, what is favorable for devotional service is um, eat only food that is offered to Lord Krishna. Okay, prasadam. Prasadam is favorable for devotional service. Okay. Yes. Sindhu, what is, what is favourable for devotional service as well as prasadam? Uh, chanting the holy name. Okay, chanting the holy name, yes. Surya Nandini, another thing? Um, hearing and chanting Maharaj. Yes, hearing, hearing the glories of the Lord and chanting His glories, yes. Nara Narayan, anything else? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj may be rendering service to devotees. Okay, serving the devotees, good, yes. Now, that's the first, the first item, is to accept everything which is favourable for devotional service. Now, the second item is to reject what is not favourable for devotional service. So, what would that be? Sri Devi. What? Involving in uh, prajalpa. Huh? Involving in prajalpa. Mm, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's something not favorable. Yes. I don't talk. Things in a mode of ignorance? Yeah, well, what is in the mode of ignorance? Mm, maybe food, tamasic food. What? What kind of food? So, as you said, Guru Maharaj, maybe the food that is very high in the mode of passion. 
So, or tamas, like fried foods or the, any foods that are not offered to the Krishna? Meat, fish, meat, and yes. eggs. These things, yes. they're not favorable for devotional service, right? Meat, fish, and eggs are not favorable for devotional service. Yes? Yes, Guru Maharaj, and maybe intoxication also. <laughs> maybe what? Intoxication, Guru Maharaj. Yes, also, intoxication is not favorable for devotional service, right? What about offensive chanting? Offensive chanting, yes, it's also not favorable for devotional service. Can you tell me what is offensive chanting? Can you explain this to me? If I'm a new person, I don't know what you mean, offensive chanting. How do you... Criticizing the devotees. Huh? Finding fault with devotees, criticizing the devotees, while chanting the holy name. Well, chanting the, <laughs> yeah, that's Criticizing something. Criticizing the devotees or blaspheming the name, the name of the, uh, the, the holy name. No, uh -huh. okay, that's Vaishnav Aparad. Yes. In attentive chanting. Yes, what? In attentive chanting. In, atten in attentive chanting. So, what do you do? How do you do in in attentive chanting? What do you do? Um. Chant with a um, good faith and. Uh, no, no, that's. Well, how, I want you to tell me how you do. What is inattentive chanting? Tell me. Not focusing on the so, holy name. So what? What are you focusing on? Focusing on uh, watching TV. Yes, right. Chanting and watching TV or chanting and holding your handphone and thinking about who didn't call you and who you want to call? Yes, oh. all right. So this is inattentive chanting, mind not focused on the holy name. You're going to chant the holy name, it's a good idea, get rid of your handphone, turn off your handphone or put your handphone in another room, go away, yeah, leave it. So, and that, so these are the first two things for surrender, that to accept what is favourable and to reject what is not favourable. And then there are four more. For example, we should know that only Krishna can maintain us, only Krishna can protect us. We should have no desire except Krishna's desire and we should always be humble, meek and humble. This is surrender. There are six items there. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he wrote songs about each of these different things. He wrote songs and a number of songs about each of these things. And one of the songs is about accepting everything favourable for devotional service. I don't know, sometimes we sing it, you maybe if you look in the Vaishnava song book, there's a song there, it's called Shu, Shuddha Bhakata. And it begins like that, Shuddha Bhakata Charana Renu Bhajana Anukula, Bhakata Seva Charana Siddhu, like that. I don't remember exactly the words, I need to sing it with the book, but it's a very nice song. And it describes all the things which are favourable. So then he says, Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani. Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani. He's saying, the holy days, Madhava Titi. Titi means the date. And Madhava means the auspicious days. Auspicious days mean festivals like Ikadasi and Janmashtami. And similarly we have also the Govardhan Puja. These are festivals and it said that these holy days become the mother of devotion when a devotee takes shelter of them. So it's important for us to observe these festivals. Uh, even you can observe them in your own home, you know, you can do them in, in your own little way privately. You can just uh, worship Govardhan Hill. If it's not possible to join with all the devotees, then 
you can simply make your own little Govardhan hill and worship Krishna and go around the hill and sing Hare Krishna and then you can distribute the food. And if you want, you can distribute the food to the birds. There are so many birds, they will come and eat the rice. You can feed the birds, you can feed the mice, <laughs> you can feed the dogs. There's always, if there are no people who want prasadam, there's always the animals. So it's very nice to give everyone prasadam. So holidays like Govardhan Puja, we want to observe. And it's said actually in relation to the worship of Govardhan Puja, Lord Krishna said, if, if you don't observe the Govardhan Puja, then you may risk being bitten by the snakes which live on the Govardhan hill. So we, we don't want to be bitten by any snake. There, and there may be snakes on the Govardhan hill. And if we don't observe the Govardhan Puja, we may be bitten by these snakes. <laughs> I remember I, I was, I was in, when I was a young devotee in, uh, long ago I was in London and I was a, and they, they put me as the treasurer for some reason. So I was in charge of the money and they had to come to me to get money. And so the, the one girl, one lady, she was, she wanted to buy things for the Govardhan Puja. And so I was saying, well, we don't have much money, you know, we don't have hardly any money. We have no money. We have so many debts to pay. She said, no, you have to give me the money. I need the money. It's Govardhan Puja. We have to observe a festival. And I was arguing with, with her. I was reluctant to give her the money. And then she told me, if you don't give the money, you will be bitten by the snakes on the Govardhan Hill. <laughs> so I thought, oh, well, <laughs> okay, you better take the money. <laughs> so I gave her the money. Anyway, so that's one pastime in relation to Govardhan Hill. Anyway, Govardhan Puja is a big festival in Vrindavan. All the temples celebrate it. And they have a lot of prasadam and they distribute it freely to everyone. And sometimes even they throw it and people will pick it off the ground even, which is not very nice, but somehow these things happen because the crowds are so much, so many people pushing and shoving, so it becomes a bit erratic and sometimes the food gets thrown. But anyway, it's important to observe this festival, this festival. This is the month of Kartik, which is coming up very soon. So I want to prepare all of you to put you in the mood for observing this month of Kartik. We want to make sure that you're very careful to do your chanting nicely in the month of Kartik. And try to even do more rounds if you can. There are many devotees that actually come to stay in Vrindavan during the month of Kartik. And it was during the month of Kartik when, when Srila Prabhupada was here, Srila Prabhupada would go to Vrindavan. And this was even before we had our own temple. We didn't have our own temple. And Prabhupada would go to the Radha Damodar temple where he had a little room. He had a very small room there where he was staying. And Prabhupada would go there and, and he would give a class there. And there were, there were not a lot of devotees, but you know, because we're, our movement was very new then, and there was only like about 20 devotees. This was like 1970 or 71. And Prabhupada gave classes there on the nectar of devotion. And those classes are recorded. So if you like to listen to Prabhupada's lectures, and I hope you do, then you can listen to the lectures given on the nectar of devotion at Radha Damodar during the month of Kartik. And Prabhupada is explaining the basic philosophy of the neck of bhakti yoga. He, he Prabhupada didn't go deeply into the nectar of devotion at that time, because we were all very new devotees. So Prabhupada kept it very simple, and he was explaining to us about the power of bhakti, how by doing bhakti it can destroy the reactions of all phases of sin. Because when we come to Krishna Consciousness, we're not pure devotees. 
and we carry karma. We have reactions from our past activities. But by doing devotional service, we can remove all these reactions from the past sins. This is the power of devotional service. And this is especially true during the holy month of Kartik. The other times we may not get so much benefit, but during the month of Kartik you get the maximum benefit from doing devotional service. So we want to encourage all of you to be thinking that now is Kartik. I have to chant Damodar prayers, I have to offer my candle, and I have to try harder to introduce Krishna consciousness, to remind people about Krishna. Even if we can't uh, introduce Krishna consciousness to new people, then it, at least remind those who are devotees who are around us by speaking something about the glories of Lord Krishna and the pastimes of Lord Damodar. This is how we associate with devotees. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 10th chapter, Lord Krishna describes how devotees associate with each other. Machita madgata prana bodhayantas parasparam katayantas chamam nityam tushyanti charamanti cha. So Lord Krishna is describing the process of devotional service. That he said, the thoughts of my pure, uh, no, he said, uh, the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, their lives are surrendered unto me, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss by enlightening one another and conversing about me. So this is the meaning of a devotee. A devotee is uh, tushanti cha ramanti cha. He is enlightening other people about Krishna, telling people what we've realized about Krishna, or what we heard about Lord Krishna, or what we've understood, what pastimes we've heard. Even it may be a pastime which everyone knows, like Damodar Leela. Everyone knows the Leela of Damodar, and Nala Kuvera, and Mani Kriva, how they were cursed to become trees, and they were delivered by the grace of Narada. So this was Narada's mercy on these two demigods, that he put them into the form of trees, so that they could meet Lord Krishna. Why? Uh, how, how did Narada do this? How did he know? Well, Krishna understood Narada's desire. So Lord Krishna is the servant of his devotees. Lord Krishna wants to please Narada Muni. And Narada Muni wanted to see these two sons of Kuvera delivered. So he put them into trees and they had to stand as trees for a very long time. Big, they were very big trees, Arjuna trees, Yamala Arjuna trees, very big, very tall. And then somehow Lord Krishna, a little child, he gets in between these trees with his mortar and he knocks the two trees down. And both the trees are so huge, they crash down. But somehow, miraculously, the trees don't fall on Krishna. So Krishna is safe. And then from out of the two trees come Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, who were the sons of Kuvera. And because they were enjoying material opulence, because of their because her father was very wealthy, they were enjoying his, his wealth and they became very degraded, very sinful. So much so that Narada Muni had to curse them and put them into the bodies of trees to bring them to their senses. So we see that even you go to the heavenly planets and become a demigod like Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, it's uh, it's a responsibility 
you, by pious activities they've taken birth as the sons of Kuvera, but then they, they abused that facility. They did not take advantage of it for their spiritual benefit. And instead they became degraded and they were intoxicated in a holy place and they were naked with young women. So Narada Muni was disgusted with them. And so he thought the best way to treat them is to put them into bodies of trees and let them learn a lesson. And he put them as trees which would grow in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. So Nanda Maharaj's home is where Lord Krishna is crawling in the yard. And Lord Krishna is tied up by Mother Yashoda. And Lord Krishna is tied up by Mother Yashoda to the mortar. And he drags the mortar between the two trees and knocks over the two trees. And then Nanda Maharaj hears the crash of the trees. And he wonders what happened, my goodness. And he comes running. And then he sees Lord Krishna tied up. And he thinks, well, my goodness, who tied up Krishna? Who was this person? Who was this rascal who tied up my child Krishna? And Nanda Maharaj was surprised to learn it was his own wife, Mother Yashoda, who tied up Krishna because he was being so naughty. So this is Dhammadar Leela. It's the very amusing, very colourful pastime of Lord Krishna. How Nalakuvera and Manigriva are delivered and they offer their, their prayers to Lord Krishna and then take blessings from Krishna and they went back to the heavenly planets. And Nanda Maharaj picks up baby Krishna and ba brings him back into the home. And surprised that Mother Yashoda had tied him up. <laughs> so Damodar Leela, coming soon. This of course, we sing this song every day during the month of Kartike. The actual Leela took place on Diwali day. But we observe on every day we will sing this, this song. So please, humble request to all of you, you please make arrangements, get a copy of the song. You may have to get the song book or something, but get the copy of the song. You can download it from the internet. And if you're not able to sing it yourself, you can get a recording of the song online. I'm sure there are many versions, many people singing on, on the internet. And you can sing, sing along with them. And if you sing it every day, then I'm sure you will learn it also. You can sing it yourself which is much nicer than having other people sing it for us. Okay, so are there any questions? Anyone? Anybody has any problems or any questions you would like to ask? I know I'm in Malaysia now. Malaysia is not a question place. In Thailand or in Russia, get so many questions. China, so many questions. Malaysia, very rare. People are not very inquisitive. Prabhupada said, you should have questions, you know, if you, you, you intelligent people will have questions. You know, you have a question? Yuna Mataji? Any question? No? Yes, Devi Mataji, I have your question. Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Srila Guru Maharaj. My question is, Guru Maharaj, how do we get someone who is not very interested to offer the ghee lamp to Lord Krishna? They are not, they're really not very interested. How do we get them to offer the ghee lamp? They are showing the example, but they are not a bit reluctant to uh, be, be disciplined enough to take a shower, bath, and then come in and offer the lamp. They are not interested to do that. How do we do that, Guru Maharaj? So just leave them. Don't worry about them. If they're not interested, don't worry about it. 
Just find some other people. Just be happy to do it yourself. If they don't want to do it, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, is the saying. You know, so you're giving them the chance, but they don't want to take it. Just don't worry, don't waste your time. There's always other people who will take it, who, who can do it. Just the fact that even they're not doing it, if they see you doing it, they get the benefit. You know that pastime? The one man, he, he was, there was one sinful man. He was doing business, selling things, selling animal skins and bones and stuff, and he came to a holy place during the month of Kartik. And it happened that he was watching everywhere in the month. He'd never seen this before. He saw all the people doing the worship and reciting prayers and offering lamps and singing the songs. And, and it was, he was very cute. He didn't do anything himself, but he watched other people do it. And he watched, he looked at them, he, thought, he wondered, he'd never seen it before. He thought it was very puzzled. So it happened at the end of Kartik, when they were all breaking their vows and getting ready to end the fasting, a big snake came out and bit him, a poison snake, and he fell down. And people came round, tried to help him. They sprinkled water on him and they chanted the name of the Lord, but he died. And so he died and he was taken by Yamaraj. The Yamaduras came and took him to Yamaraj. And they asked Lord, Lord Yamaraja asked about him, they said, did he do any pious activities? The Yamaduru said, no, nothing, only sinful activities. So Lord Yamaraja said, then take him to Kumbipaka Loka and put him in the boiling oil and let him fry in the boiling oil. So the servants of Yamaraja took him to Kumbipaka Loka and they threw him in the big pot of boiling oil. As soon as he went in the boiling oil, the oil became cool. And it was, it was so amazing. All the servants of Yamaraj, they were all, wow, they were a surprise. They'd never seen this before. They thought, what happened? They put him in the oil. The oil immediately became cool. And so at that time, Narada Muni came there and with Yamaraj. And they told the Yamaduras, they said, you see, this man, he never did anything pious, but he watched other people do pious activities. And because he was in the holy place during the month of Kartik, he was watching all these devotees. So he gets one-sixth of the benefit of all of their pious activities. And by getting one-sixth of all the benefit of their pious activities, all of his sins were destroyed. So he said, you cannot harm this man. He's now free of all his sinful reactions. And so they said, anyway, he's come here, take him around, let him see hell, let him see the hells. And then he went off, after he saw all the hells, then he went with Kuvera, he went to the higher planets to be with Kuvera. So that pastime is told to encourage people, sinful people, who don't do any pious, that just let them watch other people do it. If they just simply watch it, they'll get benefit. Okay? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Very inspiring. Actually, I'm very inspired to visit two, three of friends. And now maybe I will even sponsor the lambs also, take it to their house and sing the song and start them with the puja. So that they will, they will uh, do it because a few people have introduced it to, they are doing it, but I'm more inspired to take it one step further by actually taking about buying the lamps as for them on their behalf. No. Oh, okay. more effective uh, because if I leave it to them, they may not go to town to buy the lamp. Never mind, I can buy the lamp for them and uh, give it as a gift okay. like that. Okay, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I have a question, Guru Maharaj. Yes. I want to ask if, let's say, our parents are far away and if you offer a ghee lamb on behalf of them, so do they receive the same benefit? Who? Your parents? Our parents, yes. Do we, if they are far away, so if we offer the ghee on behalf of them, yes. do they receive the same benefits? Yes, can do. 
Of course, they get more benefit if they did it themselves, but they get some benefit. I don't know if they get the same benefit, but they get some benefit. They get some benefit. Of course, if you become a pure devotee, if you do it, then they will get benefit. Because you're their daughter, they're your parents. So if you become a pure devotee, then they will also benefit. Guru Maharaj, can we offer glimpses in our on behalf of departed parents? On behalf of departed parents? Can we offer the glimpses on behalf of the departed parents? If you like, yeah. Okay. It doesn't have to be a ghee lamp. You can also offer candles, you know. Yes. Or maybe usually we just offer oil, some oil lamp. Oh, oil lamp is also fine, Guru Maharaj. Oh yes. Oh, thank you. Guru Maharaj, I also have a question. I didn't catch your words. Um, is it better to sing the uh, Madhurashtaka on Sanskrit? Yes, you have to sing it in Sanskrit. Okay, I will learn Sanskrit, yes. <laughs> so I like Sanskrit very much. You have to hear the recordings. We always sing it in Sanskrit. Yes, 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 I know. I heard. So you can sing it in Sanskrit. You, mm -hmm. you will learn Sanskrit by singing the song. Yes. Yes, I will do have alone the Mudarashtakam. Okay, during the Kartika. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh -huh, thank you. You offer one can little candle also. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, you say it every day, yes? Yes. Uh -huh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Yashodamai. Please accept my humble obeisance. Hare Krishna, please. Uh, first, I want to uh, say uh, about Sri Devi, say about that key. Uh, in SJMKL, Sri Takara Mate, we are, we, are post, we are post or we are sent out key, key stick, and a uh, picture to all the devotees who wanted. So, like Sri Devi in Glen, we can post it also. We do, we did, we do that. Oh, thank you, Mataji. Uh, we, we can send the delivery, they have one team delivery and post free. Uh -huh. The double the pack is it? Okay. Guru Maharaj, my question is about association with non devotee. We are not supposed to association with non devotee. But around us, like let's say my family, only myself are devotee. I'm, I'm the only one is devotee. So we are not able to avoid to not associate with non devotee. So, yes, of course. We have to associate with non devotee because a Guru Mahara sometimes in the class say we're not supposed to associate with non devotee, so we're not able to do that. Yes. Okay. We have to associate people who are not devotees, but just be careful how you associate with them. Because, like, uh, they say, I, I really firm, I really fit, I, I know I'm a I'm a Krishna devotee. I I know that I not I won't be affected by other non devotee. But I want to let's say I will uh, uh, hope that I can serve them with prasadam, let's say. Yeah, very nice. To influence them. So that means I still can able to associate with non devotee. No, I won't, I won't go down because I, I mix with non devotee, then I, I, I will become, I will get influenced by them, they say. So, so it's okay. In this way, we yeah, can... Yeah, you, you give them your association. You don't okay. have to take their association, but you give them your association. Yeah, because this one always, in my mind, it a, a bit influenced me that, oh, we, we cannot, um, we cannot uh, associate with non devotee. So is that... Typical, no? Typical, otherwise have to stay at home only. When you go out, oh, it's all, all of them are non-devotee. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Well, that's common for many devotees. Many, many of devotees are in that position. But the idea is that you give association. 
rather than take their association. That will be better. Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna, Vaishnavi. Guru Maharaj, we offer four, two, three, and seven our own, right, Guru Maharaj? That is also important. Sometimes I tell they get so confused. Just offer seven our own. I tell like that. It's okay. Well, you know, it's not a big thing how you offer it. It's a mood. It's the main thing. Is the mood. You know, it's not how many circles you do, you know, it's, don't make it so ritualistic and mechanical. The important thing is the mood of devotion. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, yes. So try to keep the mood that you want to have to, uh, to, yes, to please Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. But generally we offer, you know, a few, a few rounds to the feet and then first you begin offering to the feet and then up to the body and then up to the head and then around the body. Mm -hmm. So you can offer a few circles to the feet and then a few circles around the waist and then a few circles around the face and then around the whole body. But you don't want to spend the whole day just offering circles and counting one, two, three, you know. We want to pray to Krishna that I'm very fallen, that please bless me, help me to become Krishna conscious. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so, Guru Maharaj, can we reuse the clay pot, clay lamps? Can we reuse it? I bought a lot of clay lamps to for Damodar Puja. Huh? And, uh, can I reuse it? Like uh, okay. wash it? Okay. Yeah, if you wash them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, can. I was, yeah, because I was thinking one time clay pots, it's not so clean to reuse it or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but you don't have many of them there. It's where you are. Difficult yeah. to get them. So I think it's yes, okay. So you can reuse them. What we usually, you can also use the brass one. When we use the brass one, we reuse that. Okay, that's better. Yeah, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. You have the brass arti lamp, so you can just use that. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. But I have the brass only one. If uh, everybody has to offer a lamp, then uh, ghee lamp, but I can also offer candles, right? Yes. Said, oh. Candles is also okay. That yeah. is more easier. Yeah, we have we have very small little thin candles which we keep in Hong Kong, and people come in during the day and they'll just take one and light one and offer it. You know, not a big thick candle, but a, a little thin candle which burns quickly. And similarly, if you if you use the oil with the oil wick. The, the wick for the oil, then you, you, you know, you, you put some oil in there and let it burn. Then you can take the wick out and just sit it on the stone surface. And then you can use the, the arctic lamp. Somebody else can use the arctic lamp. Okay, good much. I didn't understand. Maybe I can later clarify with Sri Devi Mataji. I, this oil thing. That just means, you know, yeah. once, once somebody uses the RT lamp and offers it, then the, uh -huh. you, you can take out the wick, take out the wick and just put the wick onto a, a metal surface, on, on a stone surface. Okay. And, and let it burn, let it, leave it burning. Uh, okay. And then you can put a new wick inside the RT lamp. Arti lamp. Okay. Got it, Guru Maharaj. So one Arti and the wigs alone we have to keep changing. Yeah. Okay, thanks Guru Maharaj. Sorry, you have to repeat again. Thank you Guru Maharaj. Or you can just do candles, little candles and they have a little spear on the end and they stick it, you stick them into the, you know, we put some yeah. rice, rice there or something or we stick them into a potato or something. <laughs> yeah, yes Guru Maharaj. <laughs> okay. Thank you Guru Maharaj. All right. So, yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes. 
Well, they can meditate on blessing, that please bless me that I can become a better person, that I can give up my bad habits. Help me to improve myself as a person, to be better, a better character. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Can I cheat them to say they can wish for, whatever they wish for? I'm sorry, your voice is not clear. Can I cheat them to wish for whatever they want? Yes, if you like, you can. Yeah. And, uh, and for us, is it important to ring the bell? No. Okay. Hare Krishna, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances as well. Hare Krishna. Okay, so I think we can stop here now. Thank you very much for your association. And I'll be giving class in the future also for the Klang devotees. I always like to come to Klang when I'm in Malaysia. So I'm very glad to have the opportunity to be with Klang devotees here on Zoom. And I look forward to giving classes more in the future. So thank you all very much for your participation and for your uh, questions. And we wish you all have a nice Damodar. And I'll be seeing you during the month of Damodar. I think I'm giving, I'm booked for a class in Yes, Guru Maharaj. November, right? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I'm Minachi Sundram from Wisconsin Klein. On behalf of Wisconsin Klein, we wish to thank the action of our appreciation for you to have a wonderful class today evening. We hope to see uh, uh, another class the session on the 7th of November. Looking forward for that, Maharaj. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Today was a very impromptu. And uh, they were really uh, surprised. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhus. Very nice of you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for your participation as well. Uh, and we are, we are going to have our Damodara launching on the Telipas Maharaj, uh -huh. Bishop Temple, and followed by offering of new lamp in Klang Town, heart of Klang Town, every day from 22nd evening for all the. Uh, uh, who are patronizing Klang Town, we are giving them the opportunity to offer wave land for Damodara throughout the month until the uh, Maharaj. Wonderful, wonderful Prabhu. Very nice. Blessing Maharaj. Maharaj. You the bless us. Yes. May Krishna bless you. Ashurbad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Go yeah. back to Brinda Key. <laughs> <laughs>